Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Two, Box 13, care of the star times. Carl, Carl, what are you doing? Nothing. I ain't doing nothing. It's just a book, Holiday. Somebody sent a book to Box 13. Why? And now, Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holiday. Susie. Susie, come here a minute, will you? Did you call me Mr. Holliday? How did you guess? I heard you. All right. Now that we've cleared that up, how about this book? That one? This one. It came in the mail for box 13. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure, Mr. Holliday. The wrapping paper's right in the wastebasket there. I I'll get it and show you. Here. Address printed. Block letters. Shaky hand. Susie, did any letter come with this? Hmm, just the book. Ex Libris. Robert and Chase. All right, Susie, we've got a problem. Somebody sends me a book from the library of Robert and Chase. Why? Maybe it's a bestseller. Yeah, and its day it was. Still is. The poems of Sir Walter Scott. Do you like poetry, Mr. Holliday? Love it, Susie. Just love it. Listen. If thou wouldst view fair Melrose aright, go visit it by the pale moonlight. The gay beams of light some day gild but to flout the ruins gray. Pretty, huh? What's it mean, Mr. Holliday? Susie, you're asking the jackpot question. The book's broken to fall open at this poem. Why? We're in a rut. Uh, there's one way to get out of it. If anyone calls for me, I'll be in the morgue. Star time. Sure, sure. Robert N. Chase. We've got plenty about him, Holiday. Well, let me have it. You ought to remember him. Vaguely, I do. All right, Mac, what have we got? Headlines. Lots of them. Headlines, huh? What's he been doing? Same thing he's been doing for the past ten years. He's in a rut, too. Six foot deep. Dead? Here. You read all about it, Dan. Socialites dead in tragic blaze. Oh, sure, I remember now. But ten... Ten years ago, I was cutting my reporter's teeth on a police beat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A cop wouldn't get a juicy story like this to cover. Son near death. Daughter at school escapes tragedy. Last night, fire swept the Robert N. Chase mansion... Blaze unnoticed until too late, spread rapidly. Injured son not expected to live. He did, though. Uh huh, I see. Mildred Chase, 18, was attending a college function when the flames took the lives of her parents and swept rapidly through the palatial country estate, Fair Melrose. They were. Fair Melrose? Yeah, that was the name of the estate. Fair Melrose. Mac, the uh, Chase girl, got anything on her? What paper didn't have? What do you mean? You know, too much dough, spoiled kid, wrong company. She ran smack into the gossip stuff almost every week. Know where she is now? Well, she dropped back after the fire. It kind of cooled her off. Oh, she's been a good girl ever since, is that it? Well, that's it. I tell you what, Dan, drop upstairs to see Mona in society. She can give you the dope. All right. Thanks, Mac. Say, you must come and visit my morgue sometime. Uh, I like this one. I only read about characters. I don't have to bump into them. Ah, but mine move around, Mac, and sometimes too fast. Oui, monsieur. Ah, free French are engaged. You wish to see someone, monsieur? Yes, Miss Chase. Miss Mildred Chase. You have an appointment? Is that an offer or a business question? <laughs> monsieur, if you will tell me... Paulette, what is it? There is someone here, mademoiselle. I don't wish to be disturbed. 
I am sorry, monsieur. But Mademoiselle Che, she is not home. Oh, I see. Then you've got a talking piano. Oh, please, monsieur. I cannot let you in. You are Mademoiselle. Yes, I did. But if you will go in and tell Mademoiselle that Sir Walter Scott is waiting to see her, I'm sure she'll listen. What do you say? Where? Vive la France. <laughs> All right. You wait here. But I cannot promise. Yes? What is it? What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Chase. I, I have to see you. Well, I don't know you. I've never seen you before. Well, lots of people haven't. But my name's Dan Holliday. The name means nothing to me. It means everything to my mother. <laughs> what do you want? I'm sorry, Miss Chase, bursting in like this. But I've come to see you about Fair Melrose. Who... who are you? Oh, I told you. Dan Holliday. Occupation. Fiction writer. And are you writing now, Mr. Holliday? Maybe. Oh, uh, is this yours? Mine? That book? Here, take it. Where did you get this? You don't know. No. Where did you get it? But you do recognize it. Yes. It, it was part of my father's collection. I asked you, how did you get it? Through the mail. It was addressed to Box 13, care of the Star Times. Or doesn't that mean anything? No. Nothing at all. You should read the classified ads, Miss Chase. Box 13. Adventure wanted will go anywhere, do anything. But you thank see, I... you for bringing the book back to me, Mr. Holliday. You don't have any idea why the book was sent to me? Oh, I, I don't know any more about it than you do. Maybe you don't. That's right. Colette will show you... Was there anything I... suspicious about the fire that destroyed Fair Melrose? Mr. Holliday, I don't know what you have in mind, but that was a cruel thing to say. A hateful thing. You're not proud of it, are you? I'm nothing one way or the other, Miss Chase. But that book was sent to me. It was broken to fall open at the poems about Fair Melrose. I'd just like to know why. I know nothing about it. All I know is that fire took my mother and father. It's very sad, Miss Chase. And my poor brother was left a hopeless invalid, completely paralyzed, unable to speak, to move. Where is your brother now? At Fair Melrose. The place he always loved. But I thought it was destroyed by fire ten years ago. Yes. But one wing remained standing. Your brother is there alone? Yes. That's where he would want to be. And I arranged for someone to care for him. Oh, I see. And now, Mr. Holliday, I'd like to forget all this. Well, I'm sorry to have bothered you, Miss Chase. I was merely curious about that book. I know nothing about it. All I want to do is to forget. To forget! <laughs> Want this hour of the night. I'm looking for Fair Melrose. Eh? What for? Will you tell me how I can get there? I'm lost. Stay lost, then. Just a minute, please. Get your foot out of the door. Get! Don't be afraid. I'm not going to harm you. I just want to know the way to Fair Melrose. Eh, what for? I've I've got business there. You're lying. Nobody's got no business there. Nobody. All right, I'm nobody. Is your house on the ground? Yeah, it should be. Been here for 30 years. Oh. Nice little cottage you've got here. What do you want to go up there for? To look at it. Huh? What for? Huh. Nice waltz we're having. Young fella, I asked you a question, and you ain't answered. All right. I want to find out about the fire. Well, ain't nothing nobody needs to find out about it. It was a visitation of the Lord. It was a judgment on the sin that was going on. Heaven rained fire that night and wiped out the last of Babylon. I'm not sure I got all that. Oh, the wages of sin is death. Now you know. Wait a minute. Were you here that night? Me and Carl. Carl? Yes, my husband. He was down here and seen the fire eaten up like the vengeance of the angels. We seen it, young fella. It was a judgment. A judgment for the years of sin. <laughs> we didn't have to do no more caretaking after that night. Providence took care for us. You and Carl uh, caretakers, is that it? That's right. <laughs> only, only one wing to take care of now. Only one wing and him. 
Oh, the brother. Yes, yes, him that can't move or talk or hear. And that's where they brung him. And that's where he stayed. Now, you get. I, I talked enough. I wonder. How do I get up there? You're still going up, huh? More than ever now. Which way? Uh, straight up the canyon. Turn left. It's top of the hill. Thanks. Maybe you should have picked a lighter night. Yes, one with a moon. <laughs> Maybe she's right, Holiday. This is definitely no night for a picnic. And who said it's going to be a picnic? Anybody here? Hello? The same to you with feathers on. Match holiday. Don't be so stupid. Is anyone here? Mr. Chase? Oh, Mr. Chase. Holy mackerel. Who are you? Answer me. You are listening to Box 13. Starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. And now, back to Box 13. Starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Oh. Nice Barrett's own voice you got there, Holliday. Cling. Inspector Kling, where am I? Hospital. What for? For your head. There's a little dent in it, about two inches deep. Oh, I remember. Where is he? He? Who? The body. Oh, the body. What body? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did you get in? Who found me? Who told you all about this? The old girl, caretaker's wife. She found you. Oh. Kling, I saw a body in Fair Melrose. Holiday, I don't know what merry-go-round you're on, but keep up this way and you'll get the brass ring through your nose. How do I get out of this place? Walk out. Thanks. What are you going to do now? Why? I want to know where to pick up the body. Keep in touch, Kling. What have you got in mind? A date. A date with a beautiful young lady. Slightly hysterical and more than a little mysterious. But interesting. What do you want here again, Mr. Holliday? More to the point. What do you want? Will you please leave? Every time I come here, I get invited to leave. I don't know what you're doing, Mr. Holliday, but it's none of your business. You ought to... I went to Fair Melrose last night. What for? I wanted to see it. And your brother. You mustn't see him. Why not? What do you do, Miss Chase? Please leave him alone. All right. Did you go to Melrose last night? No. I haven't been there for ten years. You weren't there the night of the fire either, were you? No, no, I wasn't. All right, all right. I'll take your word for it. Now, mind if I ask you one more question? If you'll go, I'll answer it. It's a deal. What are you afraid of? Nothing. That's your answer? Yes. I, I'd almost forgotten that horrible night until you came here. For ten years, I've lived away from it, keeping it away from me. Now you've brought it all back. Don't you have any pity? Lots of it, Miss Chase, for a lot of people, particularly you. What do you want to see him for? 
I've got to. I want to talk with him. He can't talk. He can't hear. He's in the only wing left by the fire. Well, that he is. You, you still want to go up to see him? Yes, I do. Oh, the chases. Devil's brood, all of them. Devil's brood. The young and with her temper, screaming at her mother and father. And him that's upstairs now, always fighting with his sister. The fire was a visitation and a judgment of providence. Ah, ah. There he is. Oh, no. Well, that's him. You stay here. Mr. Chase. Mr. Chase. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't, can't. Shut up. Mr. Chase, I'm... I'm Dan Holliday. Box 13. Box 13, do you understand? Not in his head. That's all he can do. Mr. Chase, you wanted to see me. You sent me that book. You had Carl send it to me. Is that right? Nod your head if that's right. Good. Now, why? He can hear. You can hear me a little, can't you, Mr. Chase? Good. Why did you send me that book? Why did you want me to come here? He wants me to look around, Bertha. At what? At what? Ain't nothing in here. Ain't nothing. Look, Mr. Chase. I'll walk around the room. I'll watch you. When you want me to stop, nod your head. Understand? Good. Now watch me. Here, this trophy case. Is this it? What about it? What do you want me to see in this? Good. Bertha, come here. I ain't coming in. I said, come here, come on. Take a good look at this trophy case, Bertha. A good look. Uh, I don't see nothing. There's a plaque missing from its place. There's heavy dust around behind all those cups and trophies, but there's a clean spot here. Where a plaque stood. No dust, Bertha. No dust. Someone took a plaque from here not more than a few days ago. Did you? I ain't touched nothing. Never touched nothing. Mr. Chase. That plaque. Whose was it? Yours? No. Your father's? Mother's? Mildred's. It was hers. But someone took it. Mr. Chase, try to understand. Try to answer. Please, you've got to. He can't. Mr. He... Chase, try hard. Try hard to hear Let me again. Let him alone. He can't do no more. Stay with... Stay with him, Bertha. Don't leave him for a minute, do you hear? Oh, hello there. Hello, Holiday. Expect I'm in a hurry. No, it looks like it. But you can spare a poor cop a couple of minutes to explain something, can't you? What? That body. We found it. In a ravine about a mile down the road. All right, you found the body. Now I'm in a hurry. I gotta Not go. Not so fast, Holiday. There are a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Later, Kling. Later. You know where to reach me. Holiday. Come back, Holiday. I say come back here. I'd be care of box 13. <laughs> You saw my brother, Mr. Holliday? Yes, I saw him. Oh, please keep playing. I don't know why I let you in here. I do. Can't you leave me alone? Please, the piano. I like to hear it. What did you find out? So you don't know why anyone would have taken that plaque from the trophy case? No! Your brother managed to tell me it was yours. He what? Where was it? In the lower right-hand corner of the trophy case. Lower right-hand corner? Lower? That mean anything? Well, it... If it's a plaque I won for dramatics at Merrifield Academy. I don't get it. What value does it have? It isn't worth anything except... Except what? The plaque was presented to me at a dinner at Merrifield. So, go on. The dinner... 
was the night of the fire at Melrose. Then the plaque would prove you were at Merrifield the night of the fire. Yes. But somebody... Somebody wants people to think you were at Fair Melrose. Were you? No, no, no. How many times do I have to say that? That's enough. Who hates you, Miss Chase? My brother. Your brother? They all hated me. My mother, my father, my brother. Sometimes I think I hated them. Watching me, picking my friends, cutting me off from the friends I picked. I couldn't stand it I any... I see. All right, Miss Chase. We'll forget it for now. But can I come back this evening? Why? I said before I wanted to help you. That still goes. Miss Chase, it still goes. <laughs> Please sit down, Mr. Holliday. Thanks, Miss Chase. Do, uh, do you have anything to tell me? A few things, yes. But first, uh, is there anything you want to tell me? Tell you? Why, no. You sure? Positive. What could I tell you? A story. I don't know what you mean. All right, I'll explain. Must you play the piano? No, but I'd like to. Miss Chase, let me tell you a story. What about? Well, I don't know whether it's exact or not. You see, I have to guess a lot. Fill in details myself. But this story's about a girl, an 18-year-old girl. That is, she was 18 10 years ago. And what's that got to do with me? Oh, you might be the girl, Miss Chase. Wild, with a temper, bad temper. She had a lot of fights with her parents. Mostly about the friends she had, the way she ran around. What are you trying to say? That one night this girl set fire to her home in a fit of temper after a fight with her parents. Maybe she didn't mean to do what she did, but the fire destroyed her home almost completely. It meant the death of her parents and it made her brother... You're homeless. making this up. You're guessing. I said I'd have to guess. I was at Merrifield the night of the fire. For a while. I checked. Found out you left early enough to get to Melrose. And you brought a plaque with you. The one you'd won for dramatics. Well, I, I brought it to Melrose later. The, the next day or the next. I, I, I don't remember. No, that's no good, Miss Chase. It's too hard to believe that anyone would walk into a ruined home and put a plaque in a trophy case. I say you took it to Melrose. Then had the fight with your mother and father. You're lying. I don't think so. I took it there after the fire. And why is it missing? Want me to look around your apartment for it, Miss Chase? Or send for the police to look for it? No. Why not, if you haven't got it? Why are you afraid to let me look for it? So I am right. Now let's get on with the story. For ten years you held the secret. There's nothing to connect you with the fire at Melrose except that plaque. For years, that fire's on your mind. Day after day, you have to live with the secret, wondering if there's anything that will connect you with that night. But there's nothing. There's nothing. Then you remember that plaque. It will prove that you were at Melrose, because the date engraved on it is the same as the date of the fire. No, I tell you, it's not true. So there's only one thing to do. Get that plaque out of Melrose. But you didn't count on one thing. Your brother. Day after day, he saw that trophy case. Day after day, it was the same. Never changing. Like the four walls he had to stare at. But suddenly, it's different. There's... There's something missing. He racks his brains and he remembers. He remembers the plaque that was there. When he was able to read, he must have read about the fire. How you escaped the tragedy by being at school that night. How lucky everyone said you were. He read how you were presented with a plaque for dramatics. And his tortured mind puts two and two together. And he arrives at the conclusion that you were at Melrose. Home. The night of the fire. Well, Miss Chase, did you like that story? There's nothing you can prove. Maybe not. But how about Carl's murder? You killed him. Because you thought Carl was me last night. No. What, what are you doing? Calling the police. It's for them now. I think they'll prove you killed Carl. 
They're good at that sort of thing, Miss Chase. Very good. No, no, please. What do you want? Money? I'll give you money. Anything, only don't call them. Why not? Please, please. Hello, Inspector Blinken. They hated me, all of them. Okay, I hated on. them and you. I hate you. Look out. Look out. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello, Kling. Holiday. Come to the Sunview Apartments now. I, uh, I just rang down the curtain on a ten-year dramatic act. <laughs> thrilling, Mr. Holliday. Yeah, sure, Susie. About as thrilling as throwing dirt in the guy's face. Oh. Well, here's some more mail for Box 13. Later, Susie, later. But here's something maybe you ought to look into. What? If you subscribe to this book club, you get a free set of Sir Walter Scott's poems. Oh, fine, fine. Good night, Susie. Next week, same time... Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is directed by Russell Hughes. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. With an original story by Frank Hart Tausig. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. This is a Mayfair production.